The last section of the interview is what we call the Enigma questionnaire, mm. where there are questions that you just give short answers to. Uh -huh. Okay. okay? <laughs> uh, Trap. <laughs> yes. The first question is, what five words best describe you? That's, that's really, the, the, yeah, I, ca I can't really describe myself. Uh, I, all, I, all I can say is uh, a human being um, who happened to have been born in an Egyptian village uh, into Islam uh, and loves good and believes in good for all humanity. Ironically, ironically, the dearest things to life are two things. Um, uh, and I say ironically because they are, they are the two things that you have no hand in. The land you were born in, uh, in and, and, and your parents. What do you love most about the Middle East? Um, charm. Um, the kindness of its people. The rich history. Um, the food. And um, the and the tolerance. Mm -hmm. What do you hate most about the Middle East? Hypocrisy sometimes. Um, oppression. Um, Forgetting about uh, the beautiful values that are actually part and parcel of our culture and uh, religion, whether it is Islam or Christianity, like, like the value of work, for instance, mm -hmm. how to do it to the best of your knowledge, like of being honest in your dealings with people, like taking only the uh, superficial side of religion and culture and forgetting about the essence of it. Mm -hmm. What qualities in people do you most admire? Honesty, 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 three times. Uh, spontaneity. And empathy. That's what we like. And empathy is, is such a, <clears throat> you know, the ability to put yourself in somebody's shoes. Mm -hmm. We like this. We really need that. Mm -hmm. If we do this, we will have um, moral tolerance and at least understanding of everybody's. Uh, point of view, even if we didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. And what what qualities cause you not to trust someone? Oh, I have two things in my life: uh, my private life and or my social life generally, mm -hmm. and my work. Mm -hmm. In my work, I distrust until proven otherwise. Uh -huh. In my social life, I do the opposite. I trust everyone until, pro until proven otherwise. Some people think that I'm naive and things, but I like to think this way. Mm -hmm. uh, I never started with anyone by distrusting them. Mm -hmm. I give everyone full opportunity. But if at a certain point I smell, just smell anything, I drop them dead. That's, that's just the, the other side of me. Mm -hmm. But I, at least I, I start off with, uh, throughout uh, my social life with everyone by trusting and really being open to mm -hmm. them. And are there certain qualities that attract you to people as friends or partners? Yeah, just be yourself. And this is one thing I really hate about... Uh, I don't want to say it's part of our culture because it, it isn't really. Being superficial. Being um, 
outer motivated more than in, uh, 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 inward motivated or inner motivated. Yeah. When you, when you behave not because you are driven by what uh, you believe in or you uh, um, think uh, about, but rather by your expectations of what the others will think of you. That is really, you know, th for me, it is just like, uh, um, and in my opinion, if this remains uh, with anyone uh, long enough, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a killer. Uh, uh, Sigmund Freud says to you, uh, if, you if this gap between uh, your inner and your outer re you know, remains, uh, then um, <coughs> you have a, a conflict and you can't do it. Either of two things will happen. You either change what's inside you, your inner thing, which is consisting uh, of values and attitudes, uh, or change the outer thing, which is behavior. But given that you've lived so many years in a liberal, open society, how do you personally adapt to living in a very it's not easy. It's a and radical I, society. I know, it's not easy. It has a price, of course. It's not easy. But you live once. You either be integral with yourself, the way uh, Allah created you, so long as you have nothing to be ashamed of. Or you conform to the expectations of others. Um, I know it's not uh, easy and it's so... I know it's easy for me to say now, but believe you me, even before I left Egypt, I was like this. Everybody who knows me, he will tell you that Yusri was always crazy and mad about that. It made me lose some friends, and, I, and I, happily, by the way, because if you don't accept me the way I am, then maybe I'm better off not knowing you. It's as simple as that. This is me. Take it or leave it. So long as I do not uh, hurt you or anyone or go against anything uh, that's, that's in, uh, in our religion or our culture or against the law. Khalas, mm yani. -hmm. Just be yourself. But a lot of these outer expectations are directly or indirectly related to religion. So does that ever cause a conflict? Yeah, yeah, what, what, yeah, the what, what do you mean, religion? Expectations? No. There's a difference between religion and what I understand to be the religion, okay? And that's a huge thing. There's a difference between Islam or Christianity on the one hand and what we understand as Islam or Christianity on the other. This is our main problem. All the beautiful values in the West now are part and parcel of Islam. Be honest to yourself. Uh, I hope one day that I, you know, when I get uh, an electrician or a plumber or something like this, that I don't have to tighten the screw after they are gone. Because, and I hate lying, because, you know, we, when, when, where does lying come from? You lie when, you, when there's fear when you are afraid of something. You try to go around fear by lying. And when you lie, you lose a little bit of yourself. And you lose your self-confidence eventually. And, you, and, and with some people, they end up hating themselves. And when you start to hate yourself, you'll never be able to love anyone else. And that's, that's basically, it goes into the spine of the society, of us as human beings, of our very humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy to combat, and it takes courage, and it has a price. But I can see it now in Egypt, when I compare Egypt to the one that I left uh, like 20 years ago or so. It's, I think it's much better now. More people are coming out and, and refusing to just abide and conform blindly. Yeah. What is the most important lesson life has taught you? Um, 
that the, no matter how dark it is, there's always hope. Um, that you can always find positive energy. Even if everything around you is negative. Sometimes I split people, you know, rigidly into this. People who are always negative and they disseminate negative energy. And people who are trying, you know, no matter how, there's no single person anywhere in the world that doesn't go through negative experiences or bad experiences or whatever it is. But people can always try and, and, and find the positive side to, to a situation that's very dark and very negative. If you maintain this and if you get, you know, grab hold of the tiniest of the smallest bit of light in a very dark picture, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. And what is personally your biggest regret? I never believe in anything that's called regret. Never. Actually, if if I can at all use the word regret, I would probably say that I re probably I regret uh, not doing. Uh, I regret no, not doing um, so many things rather than I regret doing many things. Um, no. Uh, in short, I do not believe in. Uh, the concept of regret. I believe in learning from experiences, yes. Mm -hmm. Because regret, again, is a negative concept in itself. Yeah. But if, 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 if you turn that word or that concept into another concept, which is, I'll, I'll, I'll learn from my experience, so that next time I will do this. I don't have to despise my way of thinking or behaving at a certain point of time and, uh, you know, stand still uh, crying over it and regretting it. No, that's, that's totally negative. And, and it's such a um, negative uh, energy, it will hold you back always, always. Now, I am all, you know, for facing yourself and respecting your way of thinking at a certain point of time. Like, you know, you used to know some guy, you know, 10 years ago, something like that. And something happened between you and him that made you hate him or hate the experience or hate yourself. And you, you know, continue regretting that experience. What good would that be? Where do you move on from, from, from there? Well, at least that was you when you decided to be with him at the time. Have respect for that. Because when you have respect for that, you respect yourself and you turn this into a positive energy, notwithstanding that you should learn from the experience and know exactly why it wasn't a good experience, and then try to be more vigilant um, uh, in the future. That's what I mean. That's why I don't really accept the concept regret uh, the way it usually meant. Mm -hmm. That's very well said. OK. What keeps you up at night? <laughs> <laughs> well, nowadays, there's only <laughs> one thing. There's only one thing, uh, unfortunately. I mean. <clears throat> What's happening in Egypt? Um, uh, and how I, you know, well, tomorrow, uh, how I'm going to deal with that? And you know, sh sh should we discuss it? And if we should, then how we discuss it? And who's go coming into the studio? And who am I going to get on the phone? Uh, how the pictures and this? And um, right now, it is, uh, this is the, the thing that's really on my mind. Okay, so like you don't have any... I'm not the only one here. You don't have any personal issues or fears that keep you up at night? Yeah, fears. Because it's, well, now the national uh, is mixed with the personal, uh, with, with uh, you know, everybody's living it now in Egypt. Um, yeah. Your own personal dreams are uh, entwined now with, uh, with, with, with the future of, of, of your own country. Mm -hmm. um, how, how are we going to plan for, for this? I mean, you know, we want the security to come back to the streets, for instance, and we want um, equal opportunity for, and, and social justice. And, and these are all big, big concepts that w won't happen overnight. But in the way, 
uh, on the way to them, there are so many things to be done. And now, you know, you know, if you're in the position of someone like me now, you, you, you can do something about it. At least, as, you know, people are pushing you to do, of course. to try and do something about it. And, and uh, you don't want to let, the, let them down and you don't want to let yourself down, but at the same time, in the end, you're just a journalist. Uh, and sometimes what really, what not so many people know of is that sometimes I really feel depressed and frustrated, but I can't show it because I'm supposed to lift their spirits up. I'm mm. supposed to go on the show and, 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 and look cool and, uh, and confident that uh, we're in uh, for a better life and there's hope and there's to be. Even if I feel so depressed, I can't show it. It takes emotional er energy as well. Does that drain you sometimes? Uh, yeah, but it's my job. I get paid for it anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, on a lighter note, what makes you laugh? Ah, oh, <laughs> you just made me laugh now. <laughs> um, what makes me laugh? Uh, a lot of things. I mean, that this is one thing that you know we <coughs> pride uh, ourselves in. You know, Egyptians they know how to joke about things and things to. So, uh, you know, I, it just takes me, uh, um, you know, a small incident of just a friend cracking a joke or even when I'm on air and I'm reading a joke on Twitter or something like that. And um, it, uh, it, it, it keeps you going as well and gives you, uh, makes you optimistic. Uh, mm -hmm. It relaxes you and makes you think. I mean, you know, most Egyptian jokes make you think. And that's the other a genius thing about it. Mm -hmm. So you so you laugh easily. <laughs> yes, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If there was a book written about your life, what oh. would the title be? Oh my God. Uh, I really don't know. I I don't. I, I don't, I don't want to read a book about me. <laughs> I want to read a book about my work. Okay, so the title would reflect your work, I assume. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, there isn't really something particular about me. But I hope that by the end of my career or my life, that uh, there would have been something particular about what I try to do. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's actually what matters. Uh, if this book about you hmm. was made into a movie, who would you like to play your character? <laughs> oh my god. Um. <laughs> Which actor most represents you? Uh, but it's, it, had to be, it has to be about my work, not about me. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. There, there, there's Quite a few uh, uh, good ones uh, out there now. I, I particularly like uh, Fatih Abdul uh, um, um, and, and and some other uh, actors also alike. Uh, but I don't know why, because I think he looks very Egyptian, mm -hmm. and he comes across as very uh, Egyptian. And also, um, I think his like his face is is he has. The, the, the mud of the Nile and the features of his face and the way he uh, approaches. So maybe, maybe, uh, Him. Fatih Abdul uh, with all due respect for uh, uh, everyone else. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, seriously, you have to put this sentence, otherwise they all hate me. Okay, okay no, we will put this <laughs> sentence. I feel that he comes across as, as very Egyptian. You know, that's probably why. Because maybe because I like to think of myself as very Egyptian. I don't know. Okay. What is your idea of fulfillment? When will you feel personally fulfilled? Never. I will never feel fulfilled. If you started thinking this way, your history, khalas, that's it. This is the way Allah created us until the very last moment of your life. You think that tomorrow you can do something better. So what would be your ultimate dream? 
uh, and life. Uh, I don't know. I have uh, a lot of dreams. Uh, a lot of dreams. Many of them haven't been fulfilled. I hope that some of them will be fulfilled before I leave life. But I would love that before I leave my life, that people would say that he tried his best and that with whatever I was given at a certain point that I always endeavored to maximize uh, the benefit uh, from it. And that uh, I had more friends than enemies. And, and that, um, that Egypt will, will, uh, will, will, will see a new generation uh, which I contributed with many of, uh, of, of, of the honest uh, Egyptians, uh, uh, contributed in shaping their future, the way they think and the way they, they feel and, and the way they, uh, they think of their, themselves and their, their country. That would be uh, a dream come true uh, it, that it will happen, and I think it will happen. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Yusri. Pleasure.